Welcome to this video that continues the discussion about market dynamics by talking about the S-curve, which we'll understand in just a moment why we call it the S-curve. Essentially what the idea is, is people start buying products relatively slowly. That's this bottom section here. There's uh, new products being sold initially that because there's not all that many products, there's not that much market. Uh, the number of changes that are required in order to keep competitive is relatively slow. There's a few players providing this new and innovative product and the change in adoption is relatively slow. But eventually, as more and more people buy, more and more competitors enter the market and the change, the pace of change of what the product is offering, the kinds of features, the cost efficiencies, accelerates at an incredibly rapid rate. And that's where you get this this inflection point within the S-curve. And then as the marketplace gets older, most of the changes have been made, the technology is already pretty well developed, the number of changes, the pace of changes starts slowing down again. That is our S-curve. So it becomes quite important. Early product development, these, these, the early providers are generally putting most of the energy into identifying the market needs and developing new products. And this requires a tremendous amount of, co of, amount of capital. Um, time is not necessarily the feature, it's how much effort is put in. And there aren't that many players, the market is relatively small for support, and that's why it's a little bit slower. But there's a tremendous amount of capital that those few firms have to put to use in order to maintain and drive the market forward. However, as it starts to accelerate, change has to happen quickly. Competitors start putting additional resources into improving and changing the product. And you have to keep pace as a startup company in order to take advantage of this. That's why, as you understand the market, most new products, like we're entrepreneurs, our new products are in this lower phase of the S-curve we're developing the products in the markets and learning about them very quickly. And we're learning very quickly, but the marketplace is following the leaders in a sense, the, the, the developers. But eventually the market demand, the customers drive the market and that causes this acceleration in what, um, what product features and functions are added and efficiencies and the like, which also means tremendous capital is needed during this period of time. And that becomes a, a very big challenge, which we'll actually talk about in the next video. Um, further along the, to think about the S-curve, there are different types of customers along the curve. The early ones at the bottom of the S-curve are innovators. They're helping you develop your product, actually. They're really partners. They're buying the product, but they're helping you develop it. Once it gets developed, we have what are called early adopters. These two early sections are generally not that price sensitive. They actually forgive you for making errors. They, you know, they really help you try to improve your product. They want to uh, be the first one to have a certain product and they're willing to give a little bit of extra uh, in terms of price, but also in terms of um, hassle of getting to help get the products up and running. Then you have the early majority as the product starts to gain force, the later majority, eventually the final people to buy the latest thing. Uh, which are the laggards, you know, that last person to buy a, an automobile or the last person to get an iPad, um, the last person to switch from to downloading music onto your iPod. Those are the laggards. So that's why not only is there a, a, a description uh, or a implication for how much energy and capital is needed to maintain the market growth, um, when you have to put more energy into it, you're actually your customers change. You have different types of buying patterns. They're looking for different things. Generally, once that acceleration point is passed, customers are looking for value. They don't want to be the latest. They want to become much more competitive. We call that the chasm. Uh, Jeff Moore has written books about this. It's very, they're very good books. Just this short description we'll have in our next video is not enough. You might want to go read Jeffrey Moore's books. That's with a G. Um, Jeffrey. So let's talk about crossing the chasm and some of the operating and management and marketing challenges that come from this acceleration 
of customer needs and the changing type of customer purchase decision. We'll talk about that in our next video.